Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Gary Campbell. Today we're going to be discussing a medication used in diabetes. Uh, its name is Citicliptin. Its brand name is Genuvia. Before I talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. So Citicliptin is a dipeptidyl peptidase 4 enzyme inhibitor. This would protect GIP as well as GLP-1 from inactivation. This would lead to an increase in insulin release as well as a decrease in glucagon levels in circulation and this would happen in a glucose dependent manner. So in terms of indications for use, citagliptin or genuvia is indicated to be used to treat type 2 diabetes. Now before somebody is to use citagliptin, there is a contraindication they must clear as well as some precautions and warnings they should be made aware of. Any patient with a documented serious hypersensitivity reaction to citagliptin would not be able to use the medication again. So this could either be anaphylaxis or angioedema. Now in terms of precautions, one important one to note is that heart failure has been reported in patients using citagliptin. Closer monitoring would be recommended to patients that are predisposed to cardiovascular issues. And if heart failure was to occur, discontinuation may be necessary. Acute pancreatitis has also been reported. Any signs or symptoms of this being present would warrant discontinuation of the medication as well. Serious dermatological reactions have been reported with citagliptin. One of these would include Steven Johnson syndrome. These are more commonly reported in the first three months of treatment. Severe and persistent joint pain has been reported by some patients using citagliptin. This could happen anywhere from day one of taking the medication or years after using the medication. Patients in this situation may have to discontinue the medication. It has been reported that when patients re-challenge the medication or medications from the same class, they may get the same symptoms. Either stopping the medication or dosage adjustments are recommended for patients who have renal impairment or end-stage renal disease. And finally, worsening of renal failure may also occur. In some patients, they may actually require dialysis. And once somebody is cleared of the contraindication and made aware of the precautions and warnings and they start using citagliptin or genuvia, they can expect to take it in tablet form. Citagliptin should not be used in patients with type 1 diabetes. As well, it should not be used to treat diabetic ketoacidosis. In terms of dosing, patients can expect to take 100 milligrams once daily with or without food. If patients are using citagliptin with a sulfonylurea or insulin, the dose of the sulfonylurea or the insulin could be decreased. As with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that some patients may experience while using citagliptin. So I'll list some of those here for you now. Hypoglycemia has been reported anywhere from 0.6% all the way up to 12.2% of the time. Headaches happen in 1% to 5% of patients. Nasal pharyngitis can happen between 5 and 6.5% and of the time. Upper respiratory tract infections seem to develop in patients between 4 and 6% of the time. Some more serious but rare side effects would be pancreatitis, anaphylaxis, angioedema, Steven Johnson syndrome, arthralgia, rhabdomyolysis, abnormal renal function, or acute renal failure. That's all we're going to talk about today with citagliptin or genuvia. As always, I'm thankful you took the time to combine and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help me grow this channel, you can do so by liking the videos, sharing the videos, or most importantly, subscribing to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. That's it for today. Take care.